I'm Rachel Andrews, welcome to Everyday Athlete. On this week's video I thought I'd have a little chat about something which I absolutely hate uh, but which sometimes happens when I'm doing longer swims and that is cramp, swimming cramp. I haven't experienced cramp that many times but when I have it's been in my calf or possibly in the bottom of my foot um, and it just stops you dead while you're swimming. So I want to look at a couple of strategies of how to avoid that and also possibly how to prevent it. There's been a lot of research into cramp and why people cramp but actually there isn't a definitive answer. Um, some people say it's down to dehydration so before this training swim I've made sure I've had a litre of water and I've also eaten a banana and some other uh, fruit and nuts and stuff. The other thing it can cause it is muscle fatigue and, and I'm not suffering with that at the moment. So I'm fingers crossed I'm not going to suffer it but what I will do is show you how I'll cope with it if I did get struck with a bout of cramp while I'm out there. So I tend to find that I don't get cramp usually when I'm swimming. It, it's only as I'm building up to longer swims and at the moment I am training again for my third Dart 10K, which I'm really looking forward to. But um, as you gently and, you know, I gradually increase the distance following the, uh, uh, the specified plan, I tend to find that towards the end of the longer ones is when this dreaded cramp strikes. And what it feels like is just, a, I get a bit of a tingling feeling to begin with, um, where it feels like something's firing off a little bit inside my foot or inside my uh, calf muscle and it just starts to feel a bit twitchy and then I pretty much know I'm in for a little bout of it. So what it is is a tightening of the muscles which can last for anything from 10 seconds to a few minutes um, and it can be really really sore. So the way to deal with it if cramp does strike is literally to kind of massage the bottom of your foot if you can float about that's where a toe float will come in really handy or just again massaging the part of your leg which is super sore you can feel it it feels really really tight and actually although the cramp will go off it might refire as you're swimming along again I tend to find that once it's happened that leg is pretty much dead so I will continue to swim but that one does very little active um, kicking when it strikes it's always a bit of a surprise but it doesn't absolutely stop the swim once you get out that soreness can persist for anything up to a couple of days but um it, it it's just something you will eventually get over well that was the end of my little um 3k swim real nice pleasant swim and uh super flat so I was able to just concentrate on the stroke a little bit there. Um, I'm really trying to work on my breathing uh, because I am absolutely rubbish at breathing on my left side. So I've been trying to sort that out. However, in other news, on the cramp front, I did have the kind of twinging feeling um, for probably the last three or 400 meters that actually I thought I was going to get cramp. So that's interesting. Just a little bit of um, hill walking and gorge walking in the Brecon Beacons has in fact tired my, uh, my calf muscles out I think so that stretching that we're going to look at in a minute is going to be really helpful for me I think and uh, hopefully we'll ward off further cramp events so um, I'm interested to see if by stretching regularly I can ward it off altogether and I'll keep you updated with that as I move through the series. So I just wanted to run over what I was doing in the water to release the cramp so if you get a cramp in the back of your leg, you need to stretch it out. It's, it's going to be from pointing your toes, so pulling it back and giving it a good rub where it's hurting. And equally, the same thing with your feet. It's likely to be from pointing. So trying to get your fingers in here, stretching your foot out and giving this bit a good rub should help out. Next thing I wanted to look at was those stretches. The only thing is, I need a wall and I haven't got one. So those calf strengthening exercises then. Um, it might surprise you to realize that I'm no expert in doing stretching. So actually I took a little look and I found some really good short stretches or short term videos on stretching, 
which I think you'll really enjoy. I've linked them below. What I particularly liked about the videos was that the exercises are really simple. So it's something that I can really see myself getting into and having a go at and hopefully reducing the chance of getting cramp when I next do a long swim. Please take a look at those to see what you can do uh, strength wise for your calf muscles and uh, the plantar fascia underneath your foot to strengthen that and hopefully prevent cramp. If you've enjoyed this video please uh, click on this little picture here of me, my face and subscribe. Give it a like and drop me a comment. I'd love to know what else you'd like to see on the channel. Coming up, we've got some bits on feeding when you're trying to swim further distance. Um, and I've still got to make that um, changing robe. I'm still thinking about my design on that, but that's going to come up soon. See you next time.